Hi there, I'm Nicole Scott, and this is Don Dalman. And we have spent the last few months deep diving on hydrogen. So we have a lot to share with you about what we've learned. So we've been doing an education series, of which there are many parts. And today we're going to be talking about the impact of hydrogen on climate. And one of the interesting things about the last few months has been that I've had to ask the question, do you think climate change is real? Not because I don't believe in climate change, <laughs> but because there are a lot of people who don't. And just to get the urgency of how we do need to make a move, right, is very present and very real. And we need to start to move heavy industry as well as the way that we conceive of creating and using energy. I mean, there are two fundamental pillars that we need to kind of shift our mindset in order to move forward. Exactly, and just see how it changed. Uh, let me phrase it differently. Just see how industry sectors and how industry sectors work. And they all rely on stored energy, which is stored in oil and coal in whatever fossil fuels you use. So they rely on it. There's no chance for them at the moment to do anything or to do something else. But we know that we need to do something. I think that makes it more clear how important it is because we have climate change and we can't change the climate change. And if we want to change the climate change, then we need to use other forms of energy. We had so far solar and uh, wind energy, and that we're going to stay. Um, no, um, no, um, no problem with that. But uh, what are we going to do with all the solar energy? And how do you store energy uh, when you actually need it? I mean, it's fine during the day. You have like the solar panels are working. You have light like we have here in our studio. But um, what is uh, happening when the sun is gone? When you have a gray day? When it's dark? When it's night? There is no energy. So what you need to do is like store the energy that you harvested during the day to use it later. How do you do it? If you have a constant flow of renewable energy, you can fill up your battery in your car. The efficiency is better because almost all the electricity you put in the battery comes out for the engine. Uh, but if you have an intermittent source of renewable energy, like solar, like wind, Sometimes you don't have enough, sometimes you have too much. Germany very often has too much sun and wind together. And uh, they have to pay the consumers to, to use this electricity, otherwise the grid is exploding. So at this moment, you can produce hydrogen from your excessive amount of wind or solar energy. You produce hydrogen, and this hydrogen is produced for free. It's for free. And then you use it Everywhere. You can use it in a fuel cell for your house. You can use it to make steel with a, with a gaseous uh, hydrogen. And you can put it in your cars, in your trucks, in your boats, in your airplanes, everywhere. I would really say that hydrogen was until now the missing piece of the puzzle. So what we're left with here is a fundamental shift in the way that we need to think of how societies create and use their energies. If the wind farms are just creating too much and we have nowhere to put it, I mean, hydrogen fits in perfectly. So how do we transition the rest of the society towards that kind of acceptance or that space for how to create green and renewable energies? Well, I don't think it's about, and yes, it's a transition process that you have to teach some people, but I don't think, I think it's clear that we have to do something. And, and the question is like, if you look at hydrogen, this is just storage. Uh, and we, we know that we need to store energy in some form, whatever. Yes, you can build batteries um, and you can store the energy in big batteries. But batteries or the production of batteries are also uh, are very CO2 heavy. So hydrogen, the production of hydrogen isn't, uh, and the storage isn't. So it's, it's much cheaper in terms of CO2 emissions to, to use hydrogen for that and not batteries. But I, I also think that people don't realize that hydrogen is a better solution for energy storage than batteries. So I think that it's really about changing the way that people actually consume energy is really important. I mean, it's important that we do it in our industrial world um, and in Europe and US and Asia, APEC countries, etc. That's, that's really important that we start that because this is... Where the, uh, where the CO2 emissions are produced or being produced at the moment. So we need to do something there. But 
like private households are one part of, of the CO2 emission problem and the climate change heavy industry is the other problem. So how do you help heavy industries uh, running greener? Uh, we know the car industry is doing a lot um, and, and to ensure that they have a CO2 free or CO2, uh, not negative, but CO2 neutral um, production. Uh, but hydrogen helps here uh, also. If we want to move away from, uh, from these fossil uh, fuels, uh, we will eventually have to go just to 100% or close to 100% electric, uh, electric energy provision. And so therefore, as, a, as an electricity uh, generation company, and especially as Alpic is a uh, generation company who focuses mainly on, on low carbon electricity, for us it's obviously a very important element of the future. And we heard it before, how hydrogen will be important, and we share also this. Uh, and uh, we think therefore we, uh, it is, uh, it is going to be an important element of our, our future business. And also it gives us uh, very good uh, business opportunities. So I think that energy companies making this shift towards green and renewables uh, in some people's minds maybe presents the potential for disaster. Yeah. When this traditional business model that we've had for over a century of oil and gas companies or energy companies kind of creating off of this dirty energy. And maybe, you know, it's going to create some sort of like collapse in the future. But the truth is, is that I think that natural gas specifically needs to make this transition over because they're worried. You know what I mean? Like and switching towards yeah. hydrogen actually will create more jobs for them or it'll save all of the jobs for them. So, I mean, it's a green way, but it's also kind of saving an old way of, of producing energy. Yeah, and again, we have to do it. I mean, there's no no way around and uh, there's no denying in climate change or, or something like that. So yes, you have to make the business cases, of course, in our world to have to tackle climate change. But I think we are on the way and I think businesses start to realize that it's also good to think about uh, the climate change and how to make even money with it. I think there is an additional advantage in hydrogen. It's the fact that we can make an alliance with the oil companies. Because today the oil companies are employing a lot of people and uh, they cannot go bankrupt. They need to diversify. They need a reconversion into a new liquid that is cleaner to be sold to their consumers. And hydrogen is a perfect liquid to be sold. Hydrogen can be produced by oil companies, distributed, sold by oil companies, uh, so it will not make a financial crisis when we all go to zero emission cars. And I think that's one of the more important things about this whole discussion is that going green and sustainable isn't something that has to be a detriment to the economy, right? It can be viable and it can be sustainable. And a lot of the companies that are making this transition towards the green need to do it. If you look at the energy sector, I mean, a lot of companies are investing into renewables, yeah. but also a lot of them need to have this transition in order to save jobs. Yeah, I mean, there's. I think one thing is like, you have to learn that you can make money by going green. And I think that's one of the wonderful things about hydrogen is that it can create this kind of circular economy. That if we look at the creation of renewable energy and how you're able to use it within that ecosystem, if we look at the island, right, instead of, you know, taking diesel over on a boat, mm -hmm. right, and transporting yes. energy over, they can just create and use all of the energy that they have from the sun. And you definitely need hydrogen as that storage solution so that you don't rely on the sun or the wind or the water all the time. I believe hydrogen really holds a, a green key to our future where it can not only couple the hard to electrify sectors with green electricity, so industry and also the heat, but also provide energy independence and energy security to remote locations. I mean, I come from an island where everything you use on this island, you need to import. And this also includes your energy needs. And so if you think about relying on diesel, you have to import diesel that was not made 
nearby. So there was already the whole supply chain of how to make fuel, clean it, etc. And then it has to travel on a boat that is clearly not green. And uh, then finally it makes it. So it's a very expensive and long travel to supply energy. So I see hydrogen as a solution to um, empower isolated communities and also uh, developing countries to produce their own fuel on site solely with sun and water. So that's interesting, isn't it? I mean, because an island has like, it hasn't a closed economy system, but it is a kind of closed environment. And you can see like if hydrogen works on an island where you can replace a diesel generator, in the case, replace the uh, um, nuclear power or diesel power, whatever. I mean, if it can like, do that what can it do like to to other societies if it works like in, in in a small way you can also scale it up you're completely right i think that we have to really sort of see how all levels of society can use hydrogen if we start with the heavy industry and transitioning this really intense co2 heavy activity over then this builds the bridge for everything else right if we're building the pipeline of hydrogen to the factory, mm. then this bridge is created with cities or transportation roads, roadways, which is where the cars and the trains and the ships and the planes would come in, right? Heavy industry for me is where it, it, it all sort of begins, which is why seeing that steel factory in, in Sweden with Vattenfall was really a big first step for me to know that something that is one of the most energy intensive activities in the world can transition to hydrogen then anything is really possible. People are always, sorry, people are always skeptical about new things. You know what they say, ah, it doesn't work, there's a new thing, and ah, it doesn't do anything better than the old thing, etc., etc. And the thing applies, of course, to hydrogen. People are, uh, we talked about then, we had the experience also, are very skeptic about it. But I think the skepticism is going to end soon. And I think that Corona, with all of its negative yes. impact, has actually done something very good for hydrogen, yeah. right? We spoke to Yorgos Chatsimakakis, yeah. who explained about a very kind of um, unexpected turn of developments because of Corona. Uh, because of the, the catalyst of uh, this uh, pandemic, the Commission, the European Commission, was eager to get these plans in order to implement the European Green Deal. And I have to say we were super, yeah, successful and uh, also, yeah, happy to uh, see this as, a, as an instrumental, as a big part of the European Green Deal. And now we can achieve these volumes and we can see the prices go down. I truly believe that hydrogen can play a role in our green future, right? I think that we have to switch to renewable green sources of energy. And to me, the Hydrogen Society is one of the most important elements that we need to consider. Yeah, we need it because the climate change is real and it won't change. So this was a quick look at the impact of hydrogen on climate. We have a full series, an education series about hydrogen, where we discuss the impact on economy, uh, fuel cell versus electric. We look at the holistic ecosystem. So if you're curious about hydrogen, we have a whole bunch more videos for you. Mm -hmm.